There we go. All right. I appreciate that. I had a pen in the fire. So, for those of you at home watching this, we're just starting this. Nothing else happened. There was no discussion about some weird people that eat weird things. Or uh, okay. So, parametric. Okay, so here's how I like to. One day, I'm going to get another one of these. Has, has it, have anybody never seen Etch a Sketch? Yeah. You guys know about Etch a Sketch? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like this weird red orange color. It's got two knobs. When you turn it this way, it's the x-axis, I believe. This one's the y-axis. Yes? So if you turn them both at the same time, you get diagonal line. And you got people that do the Mona Lisa and stuff. I don't quite do that. I used to have a little extra sketch that was on a keychain. It's the coolest thing in the world. And then it fell somewhere. <laughs> it's lost. Someday I'm going to get another one because it's a beautiful illustration of this idea. Um, <laughs> I had meant to look for this earlier, and I completely forgot. Because uh, this is really key. I think this is a decent um, way to think about parametric equations. Don't worry, I'll show you this one. Anyway. Etch a sketch. I think there's an online etch a sketch. How do you go into this? It's just MS Paint. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see if this works. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. So watch this. You ready? See, so I did a little something. I can shake it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so if I, so I go the x-axis there, y-axis there. If they're both at the same time. What's unfortunate with online, of course, is how do I make it so if I hit both arrow keys, it goes diagonally, correct? Mm -hmm. At what angle, exactly? If I wanted it to go at a different angle, what would I do? You can. Rotate one faster than the other. Yeah. Think about it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't do that online. At least I haven't looked into the instruction. I'm pretty sure this is too basic of a thing. It's still pretty cool that it exists. But the real etch a sketch, you can actually kind of. What if I did this with one, and then move the other one constantly? What would happen? Make a circle. Oh, you get like a weird. Uh, I can't really do it with this. Wide. You get a circle. Wave. Let me get this back towards the center. We are. It's a foot. <laughs> this is actually kind of fun. Um, so if I let's see what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna kind of. It won't let me do that, that's why. That sucks. Yeah, I need to get a real one. Dang it. All right, so a real one would be awesome, but if I kind of did one, and if I'm doing this, can, can anybody tell me what function, this is really funny, in a math class, if I just do this, what function is this? Sine. Sine. Yeah. It's really sine or cosine or something, right? It's going from, to a maximum, to a minimum, to a maximum. It's going between two extremes, oscillating between both. That's like a sine wave, and if you just constantly turn the other one, right, I'm going to get some kind of a oscillatory pattern, correct? And you could do, so, very difficult to do by hand, especially with something as basic as this, right? Um, but you can imagine hooking up computerized pins, so you can program them to apply a certain algorithmic pattern to their turning. Are you with me? The actual picture you get is just x, y coordinates. There, you guys understand. Mm -hmm. But isn't there a third variable involved? <laughs> In fact, it was from Lillian's answer earlier. What is this? There's a third variable that doesn't show up on this physically, but it actually describes why the points ended up where they ended up. And that third parameter is the, how quickly and how I, I changed how I was turning these, right? Uh, it's not always this, but basically it's the velocity. Of it. So if I turn it this way, we'll call it positive. If I turn it that way slower, that's less. And then if I turn it backwards, that's negative velocity, right? So if I change the velocity, that controls both of those behind the background, in the background. Um, how are we doing so far? So the basic idea of parameters, uh, parametrization, is to take a curve and describe the points not using x as a function of y, 
but both x and y as functions of some other parameter. T. T, exactly. We normally consider it to be time in the background. Uh, so, for example, um, let me come back. Let's see. This is going to be, let's see how this thing can handle going back and forth here. I just, it's not, it's not good, but it's not terrible. It's more than zero. Can you stay like that? Okay. Maybe. I spent way too much money on a tripod. Okay. Uh, to be really honest, before I got a, any tripod, I was using a Starbucks. Um, cup holder thing that I cut holes in mm. and then shove it. <laughs> it worked. Uh, it worked okay. Anyway. Um, if I had, for example, x equals t, y equals t. This relates to turning both knobs at the same speed. Yeah. Right? Do you guys get that? So t is the actual thing changing and then x and y are defined in terms of what t is. So this is kind of a silly example. So when I, when, back in the day, when we had a function that we got that we didn't know what it looked like, let's say we got this thing. We're like, we don't know what that looks like because we only did lines, right? It didn't sound right, but <laughs> we've only done linear functions, right? Uh, we've never done this thing. So what did you do? You immediately made a table of values yeah. and then kind of explored it, right? So if I want to make a table of values for this, it can't just be this because there's somebody controlling both of these. This one is not going to show up on your picture. It's behind the scenes, right? You guys understand? Yeah. So for example, t is 0, I get the point 0, 0. t is 1, I get the point. t is 2, I get the point. t is 2. t is 1, I get the point. All right. So that's where that 45 degree angle comes in, when I turn them both at the same speed. You guys okay with that? I think that's a, I don't remember when Etch-a-Sketch came to me, but it's just so perfect because you are T. <laughs> You're that freaky parameter. You don't show up on the screen, but you control the XY that does show up on the screen. It's behind the scenes. The T is behind the scenes. So what happens if I had, instead of that, I had this. Now what's happening? Who's changing quicker? Why? Why? Why is changing how much faster? Twice as fast. Twice as fast, right? Let me see. Uh, let me push you guys a little bit, and you're like, yeah, what the shit? You do it all the time. The angle here is 45 degrees, correct? Mm -hmm. Can somebody figure out what the angle there would be? 30? I don't know. And like angle with respect to what? That's a good question. Well, as always, with respect to the y-axis. So, so in this case, or no, it's, it's 45 degrees. What well, would it be in this case? 60 degrees? No, no, it'd be, the angle would be, no, the angle would be more. I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah, um, it's not going to be a nice angle. No, oh, um. But there's a way to figure it out. 57.5. What is this defined to be? Yeah, I'm. What is that defined to be? Y over x. Y over x. What is y over x? 2, two over 1. Two or, so two. Yeah. And how do you figure out what the angle is? The inverse tangent of two. Take the inverse tangent of two. What's the inverse tangent of two? Uh, radians or degrees? I don't care. Just make sure you know which one it is. So one point one radians. One point one radians, roughly. What is that degree? Sixty-three point four. I like it. Which makes sense because if y is increasing faster, won't the slope be larger? Mm -hmm. Y is getting bigger quicker, so it's going up faster than it's going over. How are we doing so far? Is that cool? Mm -hmm. That's something that normally you don't even talk about at all, but I like to talk about it right at the freaking beginning because it's very obvious when I did that at the same speed, of course it's 45 degrees because I'm going the same speed. So what happens if I change the speed? Well, the name is going to change. Now, if this is more complicated, will this necessarily be a straight line? No. And then you can sort of talk about angles at a certain time, but we're not going to do that. Don't freak out. Mm. 
No, that's not a big thing we do. Let me say it like that, just in case. I can't remember all the homework problems we need. Um, okay, so let's do this. What if I did, well, this gets a little weird. Let me do this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Holy crap, it happened, Jeff. What happened? Uh, X is cost, Y is sin. Right? Cosine T, sine T. Can somebody tell me anything about this? What, what, can somebody give me a point that this can never generate? Four. That's not a point. Uh, I appreciate it. Four, four. Zero. Say again? Four, four. Four, four, of course. Right? What's the, what's the largest point this can make? One, what's the one. largest X and Y this can make? One, one. One, one. Because, of course, the generating functions have a range between negative, negative one and one. So somehow this is going to bounce between negative one, negative one, and one, one. Yes? Are you guys with me? And not necessarily, and actually, does, is it ever going to hit one, one? I have to be careful. No. It's not going to hit one, one. So what's the actual, one. Uh, what's it going to hit? In fact, let's just do this. Let's make a table of values. Let's figure out what's going to happen here. So start at zero, why not? One, zero. Yeah, one, zero. And then if I put in there, now let's, let's be smart about what we, what we put in. Pi over two. Pi over two. It's a little too big of a step. Oh, four. Oh. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's at least do a pi over four. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. And of course, what are they both going to be? Zero, two, over two. Yeah. Now let's go to pi over two. Uh, zero, one. Zero, one. I mean, what is this going to trace out? Circle. It's a unicircle. Yes, yeah, a unicircle. In okay. fact, this is basically just if it's a unicircle, cosine is x. Yes. yes. Oh, x over one, right? Yeah. Let me stop for a minute. I really want everybody with me. It doesn't matter what these are. This one just happens to be the unit circle because it just happens to match up with those definitions. In fact, in this case, what is x squared plus y squared? What is x? Cosine. So what's x squared? Cosine squared. What's y? Sine. So what's so, cosine squared plus sine squared? One. One. So how do I eliminate the parameter in this case? I actually square both and add them because they're just a trig identity. Do you guys see how this is the same generation as this? Let me say that better. This generates the same points as this does. Yes. Yes. Can you say like eliminate the parameter? What exactly do you? What do I mean? Get rid of T. I'll try to put this guy. I don't know if you can help me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yes, yeah. okay. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Good job, Adam. Um, okay. This, was a, this is a special case. When, you, when I ask you to eliminate the parameter and you have trig functions, you kind of hope for a trig identity. That's the best one. You don't want to do arc sine bullshit. Right? Um, so there's going to be two different kind of questions you could be asked, and then of course there's conceptual questions, which could be anything. But the two basic computational questions are graph v, right? Graph this curve. This is description of one curve. Um, does it actually have to be a function? Well, no, this is not a function, right? It's a big old circle. In fact, these pictures get crazy nifty very quickly. This is where that butterfly graph comes from. Uh, when I teach pre-calculus, I show them the, if I find it, I'll show you the butterfly equation. <laughs> you gotta look, there's a butterfly equation, you understand? Okay. Um, and what does that mean? It just makes butterfly wings, just because it's rotating. Okay. Um, so what if, and so there's two things. I could ask you to graph a curve that's built parametrically, or I could, and then I could also ask you, Eliminate the parameter. Right, so I could graph this using this table, and then I can say, well, it's a circle, and then when I eliminate the parameter, I'm like, well, yeah, it's a circle. Okay. Maybe, maybe. All right, so let's do one a little bit different. And then we'll look at this handout. Um, what if I had. Let's 
do something we haven't done yet. Um, what is x a function of? T. T. What's y a function of? T. T. Couldn't I? What? Do this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is an intermediate step. This will be a part of the homework. And this is just to get a feel for what the thing is going to look like at the end. If I look at the components that go into it. Okay. So what does this look like? And let me let's give us uh, parameters here. Some parameters. An interval for our parameters. Uh, let's go from negative one to uh, three. Sure. Okay. So negative one to three. So this is for my t. So this is kind of like the domain of t. So what does this look like? When t is 0, x is 1. When t is negative 1, x is 2. When t is uh, 1, x is 0. And when t is 2, 3, when t is 2, so it's just a line, right? Negative 1, negative 2. So then it's not surprisingly that it has a negative one slope. We know that. So it's just a one. So that's what this looks like over its domain. So the x parts of the points this generates will go in a straight line from 2 to negative 2. This is the x-axis here, right? You guys with me? Okay, I like it. So these are the beginning parts of the points of the whole actual curve. What are the y parts of the points doing? Parabola. So at negative 1, this is minus 3. Negative 3. And of course, at 0, it's minus one. negative 4. And then it turns. At 1, it's negative 3 again. At 2, it is 0. And at 3, it is. Gave it away. 5. <laughs> So my y parts are going to do this business. Okay. okay, I really want you to understand what's happening. This is x and y each separately is a function of t. So here t is showing up very obviously. But that's not a graph of this curve. Neither one of those is a graph of this curve. This is the x parts of the points that go into this curve, and those, that's the y parts of the points that go into this curve. So how do I graph the curve then? I can actually just use what we've already done. When t is negative 1, let me just do this. So here's the actual answer. x, y. So now the t doesn't show up at all. When, x, when t is negative 1, what is x? 2. And what is y? Negative three. Negative three. When t is zero, one. X is yeah. Let's just go ahead and do this. Negative one. X is two. Y is negative three. T is zero. X is one. Y is negative four. One. Uh, zero. Negative three. negative three. Uh, two. Negative one. Zero. Zero. And then three. Negative two. And five. Right? So let's see what the actual curve looks like. Uh, one, negative four. Uh, zero, negative. So these are my points here, right? In fact, it might be a good idea to do that because your, your brain is going to see these and try to put them in. I don't blame it. 2, negative 3, 1, negative 4, 0, negative 3, negative 1, 0, and negative 2, 5. Okay. So it just looks like. Crazy. 
So why did it take this and basically make it go backwards? Because the first points go backwards, right? As t changes, doesn't my x coordinate decrease? So if I put, somebody understand what you said? So the only new thing I did was look at each of these functions by themselves, which is a valid thing to do. But I really want you guys to understand the graph of this. This is a single relationship. The graph of this is that. That's what this looks like. Good. Sorry. So is x telling the direction and y is telling like the shape? No. It just happened to be that way. Yeah, because x was linear. It's kind of hidden that that is linear at the end because it's got to also have a curvy part to it. So our brain just sees the curvy part. Right. If, if one of these two is linear, they're going to sort of kind of step in the background because the curvy part is going to kind of be dominant, right? They may be sort of like recessive genes. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to put a direction on this, what direction is this in going? This, there's a direction to this. Up into the yeah, it's going this way. There's a definite direction to parametric curves because think of t. The reason we call it t, it isn't always this but it's considered to be something like time. So as time marches forward, what direction is this moving? So you can imagine what kind of things we use parametric equations to describe. In fact, we use three-dimensional parametric equations to describe, for example, motion of comets or planets or something. Right? That is one option for describing planetary motion or, or heavenly objects. Is what we're Celestial objects. Is that better? Okay. Flying spaghetti monster meatballs in this case. <laughs> no, this is my first question. Um, okay. So there's there's several, there's two main things you're going to have to do computationally graph these and then eliminate the parameter. Eliminate the parameter is algebraic. Graphing is. Graph. Graph goes crazy. Crazy. Uh, then you're going to have these side questions like uh, plotting these to try to tell what's going to happen with the actual uh, end result. Yes? When you're trying to get the Cartesian function um, in terms of x and y, yeah. is okay. it if we get like y is equal and then x is the same thing? Yeah, now I, wanna, I, now I want, there's definitely a relationship here between x and y. Mm -hmm. I should be able to find a direct relationship between x and y that doesn't use t. So, how do I do it here? Can I use some kind of weird identity? No, there's no trick in it. T equals one minus x. Rewrite. Yeah, exactly. Solve for t mm -hmm. and plug it in there. Right. So I get t equals x. One minus x. Therefore, y is t squared minus four. Right. So cool. Cool. And then you could do. Uh, x squared minus 2x uh, plus 1 minus 4 is minus 3. <coughs> Crazy sums. Now notice something. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can get you guys to get this. That These equations lead to that <coughs> function. Yes, that relationship. It happens to be a function. These are not always going to be function. We're going to get some that do this. Right. Which is not a function, yes? <clears throat> In fact, you could say, well, it's a function if I look at it that way. All right, maybe it does this. <laughs> I, don't I don't care what way you look at it, that's not a function. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but this is important. Hold on. <laughs> Are these the only <laughs> parametric equations that would lead to that relationship right now? Yeah. Can you imagine another one? What's the simplest one? I want, let me leave that here. I'm going to take this away, take you away, take you away. I want this. So these two result in this. Can somebody give me something else that would result in this? Y plus x squared minus x. Y plus x squared. What do x and y have to be functions of? A t. Oh, so x equals t, y equals t squared. Yeah! No, x equals t. I was so excited for a minute. Oh, 
Y equals T, not T squared? Interesting. You guys can do it. If X is T, mm -hmm. what is Y? Squared minus yes? Squared minus two, T minus three. All right, that's the simplest answer. Given a function, how do you parametricize it? What's the simplest way to do it? Let the one of them be T, and then the other one is just based on that. Mm -hmm. right. Stop for just a minute. You guys understand what just yeah. happened? So I gave us this one. That does lead to this, but so does this. Yes? So basically, like, it depends on what the function is revolving around. Like, you can change it, okay, it's based off of x or it's based off of y or it's based off of t. And again, I've got to be really careful. I said this specific one came out to be a function. They don't always have to come out to be functions. Yeah. No, I meant the equation. Yeah, you're right. You're you're good. Uh, so this equation, so say it again. So basically, you can change what the equation is based off of or what it revolves around. So it can revolve around x, y, or t, depending on how you switch it around. Well, what does this what does this do? What does this accomplish? What is this? This is different, right? What does this accomplish here? Does that still work to get that result? Yep. If I start at negative one, am I gonna get all those points I got? Yep. X is T, don't I have a negative two, five? No. Am I ever gonna get that point if I no. start at negative one for T? No. You guys see what I'm saying? Maybe? So what does T have to go between? Negative two. Negative two up to? Negative two? Two, yep. Yeah. Let's see if that works. Are you guys seeing what's happening? Didn't we fundamentally just shift everything back or, or by one? And we reflected it a bit, yeah. So let's see what we get. Uh, we use those inputs for this. So negative two. I get negative two, that's crazy. And what do I get when I put a negative two in here? I get four plus four minus three. I get five. Hey, negative two, five, right? Yeah. And blah, 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 okay. So the, the thing I want you to understand there is given any rectangular equation, right? Rectangular. So the x, y is a rectangular coordinate system, or I can say Cartesian. Okay. Cartesian defined relation. Given any Cartesian defined relation, there are just about an infinite number of parametrizations of it. So why would I choose one parametrization over another? Because it's more simple. It depends. It depends on how quickly I could actually change the speed at which these go. If I make that 2t, what would that have to be to kind of still come out to be this? And that would mean that this is going twice as fast. You change the direction though, right? Or what you just did, that's... Oh, yeah, it changed the direction totally. Okay. But it did give us the same shape. Same thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it did change the direction also. I like Because now I start at that point and I go the other way. Mm -hmm. Yes? Are there parametric like equations that you can't make Cartesian functions out of? Like you just like that or something? Oh, um, are there anything like this that you cannot make? Yeah, if like a regular Cartesian. If it's a function, you can always do this. If it's a relation that's, that's harder, you can, there is an answer. It just won't always be immediately obvious. Okay, okay. All right. So let me come back down. I went a little bit further than I thought I would. Let's look at this other handout I just gave out. Again, Adam, if you could help me, let's see. So I can get this go back to the screen. So look this way. That's hey, pretty holy good shit. Yeah, single screen. Okay, just, why did I buy everything? <laughs> <laughs> you just needed a stapler. Adam, yeah. you're not getting paid. <laughs> <I'm> not getting... <laughs> all right, so, all right, get away from my edge of sketch. I love my edge of sketch. I want you guys to go ahead and try to do number one, A, B. Let's see if, yeah. see if you guys can do that. Can't see it up there, but you got your own paper. This guy can't see anything. Oh, sorry. Uh,
I go back a little pirate pull. I stop pirate pull short of five, so I stop here. So you face that direction, uh, you step out too. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you always face in the direction the angle wants you to, and you step out. <coughs> if it's if R is negative, that's easy. That just starts at three, and you're still going five. five you just face in this direction. You walk back three steps. That makes sense. Thank you. Does a Cartesian equation have to be in uh, terms of y, like y equals? Or oh, no. It just has to be in the xy plane. Yeah, OK. Yeah. No. Uh, if, if one of the parts are curved, yeah, it's very rarely going to be flat, especially when it's so shiny. If it was 100 power, that would look flat. But yeah, it's just a piece of it. So it's definitely got a curved room. Is there like a way to actually go through a point? How do you mean? Sorry. Yeah. then the x parts are always going to be defined curved curved yeah got it okay let me catch up to you guys let me see how is this if i do this much better okay so it's pretty straightforward you do have to be a little careful um, in some of these parametric graph problems, you're going to have to put your, your step size might have to be more granular than one. So it depends. You could kind of, and especially with trig functions like we saw earlier, if I go too big of a step, I'm going to miss what it's doing in the middle. So maybe I put a point here and a point there. It doesn't just connect. It actually curves through this whole part that I skipped. Does that make sense? So it's, it's, a, it's an idea of resolution. So 
I try to start, especially when the functions are nice and simple. <sighs> Polynomial, you're pretty much step by one, and it should be okay. Um, so if the t is negative one, what do I get for x and y? Uh, negative four and negative five. Negative four, negative five? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna crowdsource this. Zero, well that's hard. Zero, Zero. negative three. One. Negative four, one. Negative four, one. one. And a three. Zero, three. Zero, three. Okay, that should look nice and freaky. So we got this guy that looks basically like a cubic, of course. And the other guy's linear. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. Um, so I've got, I kind of do this for myself so my brain can kind of focus on the parts that are actually points. This is the behind the scenes guy that doesn't show up. So negative four, negative five, zero, negative three, negative, is that negative two? Yeah, negative two, negative one, negative four, one, zero, three. That is niftadelic, right? Now don't just make triangles, we know better. This should be curvy because part of it is coming from something that's curved. So it should be a little curvy. It's a little weird through here, right? Okay. And then I could put my, a lot of the questions are gonna ask you to indicate direction of motion. It's always in terms of T going from smaller to bigger. Just thinking about the passage of time. Okay, I like it. Maybe. That's already kind of nifty, yes, no, maybe. Everybody do okay with that? I mean, that's, you gotta like this basic level of parametric stuff. Uh, how do I, in the course, to eliminate the parameter, thank God one of these is linear. Yeah, set y equals. Yeah, so t, uh, what is t? Uh, solve y. y plus three over two. Yeah, y plus three over two. Then I just shove that into the other dude. X equals y. <laughs> 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 I love you guys. No. <laughs> y plus 3 over 2 cubed minus 3 times y plus 3 over 2 yeah, squared. Yeah, yeah. And very infrequently what I ask you to freaking sit there and just multiply that shit out is just not a real reason to do that. You guys all right? Yeah. Now, again, is this a function? No. No, it's not a function of x. Is it a function of y? Mm. Does it pass the vertical line test if I turn it like this? Yes. yes. So it still is a function. I, I still have this solved for x, don't I? Which is why it's not a function of y, it's a function of x. All right, maybe. Maybe, okay. So I wanna show you, before we get into the calculus of this stuff, because we're not even gonna do this part yet, we're gonna do the basics of polar next. Um, or maybe I should just do the calculus one. The calculus on this stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, I want to show you this. You can actually do parametric equations on Desmos because Desmos is, is silly awesome. Um, do you see how I have this built? I don't know if you guys can all see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one minus t comma t squared minus four. That's the one we did up on the board. Mm -hmm. so of course, bam, there it is, right? You're gonna identify with the uh, ranges. So let's do this. What if I make this sine two t? Oh my God, that's it's special. Cute. I know, we'll it's stop right there. That's special. Yeah, that's kind of nifty. That's like some artistic fish hook or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a piece of graffiti. Uh -huh. I don't know. You need to do like a little line of coming down now so you got the All right, So maybe someone out there, maybe a couple of you guys, will actually go to Desmos and just start playing around. You'll be a little bit like me then, because I, yeah. Uh, Whenever I learn something new like this, I just went somewhere and just start playing with it to see what the hell happens. So let's do this. That's really freaking cool out of nowhere. I didn't even think about what would happen if I just changed the piece of this. What if I make this a third power? Let's see. All right. If I make it a half power. Okay, look at that little. All right. All right. So what if I make this cosine cow? <laughs> We're gonna get a circle. <laughs> All right, so that's boring, right? Uh, um, that's not boring, sorry, a little circle. Uh, what if I make this, so of course, what's the two do? 
Gives it a radius of two? Uh, no. Gives it a radius of one. It's a radius of one What's diameter. What's the two do? Come on. Two faster to the radius. It changes the... Frequency. For cosine, no, it changes, changes the x. Changes like this. the period. Yeah. Right. And okay. then for y, it makes yes. Like Remember that mm -hmm. period for cosine is normally two pi. Two pi. Yeah. What would the period for those be now? Pi. Pi. Cool. Because when it's inside, it does the opposite of what it looks. It doesn't multiply by two; it divides by two. So there's nothing to the circle, though. Huh? There's nothing to the circle. Exactly. It just changes how long it oh. takes for it to get to make a circle. Oh. In fact, I got my t kind of defined weird. So what I would be curious about. Is anyone curious, what if I make them different uh, yeah. period, different uh, k values? Make it what? Four? OK, somebody's like, make them both even, Jeff. It's going to be the same. Oh, no, it's oh. not the same. Well, oh. What if I make one of them odd? Well, actually, let me give it a much bigger, uh, let's go well, much bigger. Let's start at 0 and go up to, Oh. Uh, sure. Right. Now, of course, why is this happening? Why does that not surprise us? And what's really happening, what I wish you could see is, it's tracing this over and over and over and over and over again. Because of course, what does sine and cosine do? Don't they just repeat their values forever? Mm -hmm. So if I just do this zero to two pi, two? <laughs> okay, it gets the whole thing already. Uh, so what if I make this odd? Oh my God. Now we're talking about some stuff. Let me blow it up a little bit so you can see. If I could just, I could just end that, that's what we can see. There we go, now we're talking about something. Yeah, I know. It's a little eyeballs in it. It's a kind of weird character. It looks like a power, yeah. It looks like a butterfly. All right. With the little loop boat going over it, though. Seems like a workshop. Then you start to wonder, okay, what if I make this one 2.5? What? If I do that, I do want to give it a broader range. Let's give it 8 pi. Okay. Backwards. Yeah, that's probably all it needs. 12 pi is probably the same. Yeah. You guys kind of with me? Mm -hmm. And then you get, no? What's happening? It's starting to kind of look like that the the symbol from the Big Bang Theory, the oh, I see, yeah. <laughs> the oh, yeah orbital you guys, nucleus. What is the most that this function that the, not function but that this relationship? What's the most this curve gets away from zero zero? Four, or negative four, correct? Why? Because what's going into creating its x y coordinates? Four, on the four sine, 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 four cosine. It doesn't matter worth a damn thing what's inside of the sine and cosine. The output of them can be at most one, so therefore, if I multiply by four, it can be at most four down to negative four, correct? So that's that's why it's all happening within this little confined four by four. Uh, well, eight by eight. No, four by four. Yeah, eight by eight. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um. Anyway, anyway, and then you wonder, you know, if I change this, it just kind of squishes it one direction or the other. Anyway, and what if it, what if I make a t squared? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, okay, so I'll tell you what's happening there. Let's, let's turn this down a bit. There we go. Okay. I like that. So, yeah, maybe if I make this two, it's out of phase too much, is what's happening. If I make these both, yeah, that doesn't really help out. Okay, it's out of phase. So if I let it keep going, it's not going to retrace itself, it's going to be right next to itself. So if I let it go too much, yeah. So, but if I let it go to like eight, you can see little bits in there, right? Exactly. Holy shit, man. Yeah. Yeah. let it go to six. Pi. Right? I'll let it go to pi. Got a little bit. Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. So again, what's going into this, let me let me take this back to a straightforward one. Let's see. What can I do here? Yeah. Make these both four. I think make we're having too much fun. Anymore. And let's make this. I don't think we're doing anything anymore. There. Ooh, let's make this two pi. That looks symmetrical. Yeah. Back like to the original one. Yeah. Um, in which direction is that oscillating more? That's kind of a. Let me make this really interesting. Um, okay. Uh, if you look at it. In, in uh, let me see, how do I say this? If you look at that in the x direction, it's not really oscillating that much. It's in the y direction. You see, in the y direction, of course, you fit uh, what normally takes 2 pi now takes 2 sevenths pi to happen. So it's oscillating a lot more in that direction. Okay. This is going to play into some of the homework problems about 
trying to connect some given parametric set of equations to the end result. Well, what do you focus on? First thing I focus on is what's the domain of x and y? What's the range really of x and y? So if x and y, if x goes from zero to one and there's a picture that has x is going to negative one, well, it can't be part of the answer. I can do process of elimination. Maybe, maybe. Okay. So for example, if I do this. I did nothing. Oh, oh. that's dope. So why does that make sense? Because, it does. <laughs> because now the x part cannot be. What did I do? I just took the x part and I squared it. So now the x part can't be negative. Negative. Oh. I like it. And now of course the maximum four sine two t can be is four. So what's the maximum four sine two t squared can be? Sixteen. Right. Now why does that go? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Oh, because. Let's see if it'll tell me. No, it doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> Poor little Desmos. I'm sorry, Desmos. That's 15. So there's 16 up here. That's better. All right, now that's better. Now you can see it. Are you yes. guys seeing that? So part of this is also just given uh, something that's defined in terms of parameter what aspects of it help me identify its graph compared to other graphs? So this one, if I had one that was squared versus not squared, well, this one can't have negative x's. So I only want to look for the ones that have the points with no x-coordinates that are negative. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. So hopefully I've inspired some of you guys to just go try to start playing with this. Let me, let me, go ahead. Can you show how to put that in the Desmos? Like how you... Oh, all I did was... What's beautiful is, so somebody give me uh, x, the function of t. What do you want? You can do it. Uh, uh, t squared plus 4. t squared plus 4. Ricardo coming in. Now give me something for y, somebody else. Negative t squared plus t. I like sine squared. Sine squared of t? Sine squared, squared of t. Yeah. You just can handle this, yes. Bam. Okay. And then see how it gives you <laughs> the range? Hell yeah. So the x component is a parabola, and of course it starts at zero. Now, if I if I started at negative two, why am I going to? Oh, that's right, because they have the sign. If I go negative two pi, what's going to happen? Not much. Not much, right? Because it's t squared plus four. So isn't the x part always positive? Right? Is with me? Yeah. So basically, zero captures everything x can give me. That's why I didn't really change at all. And why does this stop here? Well, because that's as far as I go with 2 pi. Is that all right? You guys with me? 2 times pi is roughly 6. 6 squared is 36 plus 4 is 40. That's why it's out here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, if I kept going, okay. Um, what was my point? Oh, that was it. Yeah. You see, that's easy. The minute you make it a point, function of t comma function of t, it opens for you the range you can provide for t. So you can change the domain of t directly. You don't have to build that. Is that all right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. OK, so uh, let's see. Somebody had a question on number 42. That's, that's kind of a big step, but let's take a look. So here's an example of a conceptual kind of problem. Um, well, maybe. favorite kind of problem. A and B are fixed numbers, so you can see on the, on the graph. What is A? What would you say? What's a quick way to tell somebody what A really is? Radius. The radius of the big ass circle, right? And what's B? Radius. radius of the small little circle. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Using the angle theta as the frame. So in this case, theta takes the place of t. So in general, with rectangular coordinates, we have x, y. With parametric equations, we very often have t and theta are the main things we sort of use. Because trig functions come into play a lot with parametric stuff. 
So it kind of makes sense beta would be a possible option for the parametric variable. Yeah. Um, so the question is, uh, if the curve gets consists of all possible positions, the point P in the figure using the angle theta as the parameter. Uh, the line sum at AB is tangent to the larger circle. Okay, so this one, oh man, this one's beautiful. So point P, if I'm at some given angle, point P is straight out parallel to the x-axis from where this intersects the inner circle. Okay, straight out. But it is the tangent line down and then straight up from that and how it intersects here. That's how you define the point P. So if I rotated this a bit, so made it theta bigger, that would go here, this would come over. The tangent would be further out, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. If I were you, and I either did this really lightly, or I don't give a shit about trying to give the book back, right? And if you're going to go further in math, you should keep all your freaking books, by the way. You should need it, trust me. Um, <laughs> you might want to draw another situation in, right? Just to give yourself some more examples of what's going on. So you want to define the x and y components of all the possible points P based on what I let the angle. So for where it is right now, how would you define the x part of this point? That's really the question. How would you define the y part of that point? This one is a pretty good problem. But at least, does everybody see how I got to where I just got? That's what it's asking you. It's asking you every point you can create in the manner which this one was created. So if I just rotate this, oh damn, that was so. Tonight, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just by 17 degrees. Um, if I just rotate this a bit, theta gets bigger. That point changes position, correct? Yeah. But the way it's built is the same. So it's just you could do yeah. Piece, okay, yeah. Piece, 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 piece. So it's a lot of trig kind of stuff. Piece, it's theta. considering how you build off of what, what? you're given. Piece, right. Theta, yeah, it's it changes as you change the angle. It's it's two it's two coordinates, right? Yeah. Say it's two, two coordinates, coordinates, an x and y value. Yeah, x and y. I know. Yeah, and yeah. then for y, yeah. it'd be like. Yeah. But you want x in terms of theta. Yep. Yeah. And y yeah. in terms of theta. Would it be possible to set up this problem in uh, Desmos using a little slider function uh, instead of writing the book uh, where it, when it, if you change the slider, it will. That's not, the not problem. To, not to find the. Uh, the formula, but just to, to visualize. It, it totally it. is possible to. Now, again, to get to point P, you actually have to answer the question. And then you can build that into Desmos. In terms of the smaller circle and the larger circle, and sliders for A and B and all that kind of stuff, and even the tangent line and the point of intersection, you can actually build all that in Desmos. Pretty straightforward. But you can't tell Desmos how to get point P until you figure yourself out how to get point P. It won't do that for you. It has to be programmed with, with that. So that's really the point here is, how would you do that? How would you get to the point where you can program Desmos to find all those points? Well, you have to tell it how to calculate it based on what the angle is. That's the real question here. So real quick, I'm not gonna do this problem, but um, what, is, tell me what's this distance here? Radius A, yeah. Okay, I love it. Um, and now it just has to be, so to get to this thing, it's just really just adding this extra bit. So then it's a question of how do you get how much that extra bit is? Make it a triangle. You, well, no, you can make a triangle. You can mm -hmm. okay, okay. draw from, from where A is okay. all the way up to that sure. okay. line segment AB. So I just want to make sure everybody's to the point where you understand. This question is just asking x is a function of theta, just like we had as a function of t. Mm -hmm. But they're using theta instead of t. I want x as a function of theta and y as a function of theta. So that when I change this, my two equations that I create, two parametric system of equations, will tell me where the point moves to. Maybe. So at least, does everybody understand how to, how to consider this problem? And this is very similar to problems we had with other trig situations. 
uh, I think of that one problem that some people just couldn't let go of. How many, you know, the, the circles that would get smaller and smaller mm -hmm. between the two big circles. Remember that problem? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. Terrible. Everybody's favorite. I never did. Snowman. Do you feel like you have enough to try to start thinking about this problem? No, right? Yeah. <laughs> no? <laughs> Don't even do it. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there another one that looks similar to this? So, real quick. What I mean by do you have enough to start thinking about it? Do you know what your goal is? Okay, yes. you're trying to get x in terms of theta, in terms of the other things too, a and b are constants. So they have to be functions of theta, but a and b are obviously gonna show up, right? And, and I would try to change the angle a little bit and start to think about what changes when you do that. And that might inform you about what the function has to be. All right, that's... We'll come back to that after people have had a chance to try it. Okay. Is there anything else people no. have tried? I don't know. Anybody else start to try to do the 10 1 homework? Anyone else? I finished it. to an issue? I just. Uh, 28. 28. It's causing me so many problems. So this is one of those that you have to match. Oh, oh 28's weird. They give you a bunch of equations, and they also give you, I'm not sure if I'm gonna fit this whole thing in here, let's see. Well, we kind of just saw one of these. Let's see if we can freeze this. My hand is gonna be there forever. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so real quick. I just, oh, yeah. we, we just went over how to look at this kind of problem. Um, Look at, uh, I don't know, look at number, uh, number C. Look at part C. It's a little freaky, yes? Um, what does X go between? What are the possible, what's the range of my X parts? Negative one to one. So which one of these can I throw out immediately? I know I don't have any scale. Yeah, the first one definitely goes. If that's negative one, that's definitely way past one. Mm -hmm. What about this guy? Yeah, no, the no, X no. is only positive here. Yeah. Right? And again, let me make sure I'm looking at it. Yeah, they don't give us a they don't give us a, a uh, interval for D. Y also goes between negative one and one. I really want you to is anybody still hung up on what's inside? When I talk about the range, who gives a shit what's inside? If I got a cosine, who cares? Sine, who cares? The range is negative one to one. Yeah. Now the domain could possibly change things, right? But the possible outputs would be negative one to one. Um, the Y could be a little interesting. Let me see. Yeah, the Y could be a little interesting because the inputs, well, yeah, the T by itself could get you from negative to negative or whatever. So yeah, Y should go from negative one to one also. Um, so here, is the Y going from negative one to one? No. 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 So x is sine of 2t. So my x yeah. component should be, be going between negative 1 and 1. I don't like it as sine. Wait. Yes. So you specifically, did you have any trouble with a specific part of this? Or just the whole thing? A and F were the hard ones for me. All right. So A, somebody give me something true about the y part on A. For, um, That's for x and y. So the smallest the y part of that one could be is zero. zero. So if any of these have any negative y's, what can I do with those? Knock them out. Throw them out. Throw them out. Crosses the elimination. This will be one, four, five. Yeah, one, four, five. Okay, and then you start to look at more specific. Then you look at the x piece. And it can't be five. Yeah, why can't it be five? Because it's going to be negative. No. Yeah, it would be negative x equals one. It's not one. It can only ever be zero. One minus one plus one is one. One minus two? Are we looking, oh, we're looking at A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're oh, oh, at a. Yeah, we're one minus A. Yeah, plus we're looking at A. Sorry. So, so it has to be five. Do you guys understand what's happening? So yeah, I can look at one five. coordinate. I can look at the definition of one coordinate, and I can eliminate some of the possibilities a? immediately. Yes? Yeah, A yeah. has to be five. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, why does A have to be five? It makes sense. Because yeah. X is always positive. Because both are only positive. Yeah, if you go to the fourth, what is equals one? The T to the four is always positive. They can only ever be positive. So, what was your fraction? Okay, really. Yeah, T is zero, you get one. T yeah. is negative one. You get, you get one. Positive. Yeah. 
Yeah. And a T, yeah. So that looks like any, it's any negative positive. term in P to the fourth is going to be positive. It's going to be greater than zero. Right? It's yeah. very, very obvious, you know. This X always has to be uh, yeah, greater than zero. For sure. This one you should be able to kind of work on backwards. I mean, what does this one, both X and Y have to be? Sine, some kind of trig function. Yeah. Oh, in fact, some kind of sine cosine, because those are contained. That one's secant and cosecant is weird. Let me see if you guys agree with me. Sine cosine contained, mm -hmm. secant cosecant uncontained. Mm -hmm. Sort of like ellipses and a hyperbolas. You take an ellipse, you tear it apart, you face it away from each other, you make it a hyperbola, right? That's why plus change to minus makes an ellipse become a hyperbola, because they're basically the same sort of thing. Just one is contained and one isn't, right? Okay, maybe. Um, so yeah, it should be one of the ones that are based on purely trig functions, like part D looks like. Real quick. Um, well, let's see. Uh, no, I'm not going to say that because it's seven right. Uh, is that enough to help out with how? So I don't want you to right now just be able to tell me the answer. I want you to feel like if you looked at it, you knew what to think about. Because that's where we are is problems where you're given it and you're not even sure what to think about when you look at them, yes? And you're all like, dude, I've been there for a while. Yes? So 48 uh, on the homework. It's this, it asks you to compare the curves and say what is similar about them. Like, what similarities do you want us to talk about? Like, the range of values, 48. where they curve, where the slope changes. Is everybody cool with this one, by the way? Is that enough for, oh my god, it's freaking me out. Wait, it's pretty good with this one. Or good enough at the moment. If you haven't looked at it at all, then look at it a bit and then come back. Uh, 48? Yeah. Okay, so the swallowtail. Let's get in there. Catastrophe. Okay, you got to love it already. Yeah. Swallowtail catastrophe curves are defined by those parametric equations where C is just free to be whatever constant it wants to be. Now, in that, you could put that in Desmos. If you put, like we did, make a point, put 2CT minus 4T squared, it's going to open another C um, scale. It's going to open it for you. It's kind of crazy. Well, I ask you if you want it, and you say, yes, I do want it. Because then you can just move the C scale and see what happens. Uh, graph self of these curves. But it's got the little icon. That means you're allowed to use Desmos, or it's not expecting you to do it by hand. You guys with me? So when you see the little red graphing calculator symbol, completely allowed to use Desmos or graphic calculator. Um, what features do the curves have in common? Okay, so for example, with the one we did, and I changed it and we just made it flatter, that's what you would say. say. It has basically the same shape, just if I change the C, it makes it flatter or it stretches it out, but it's basically the same shape. So I don't know if that's what's happening with these. To be honest, I haven't looked at a swallowtail catastrophe curve in a while. I forgot what they look like, but they look like this. just by the name, I love it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Carmen, if you're listening, what the, uh, the birds talk about it all the time. Yeah, like, do you remember that? The birds love the map. They can never forget it. Uh, it was a catastrophe. It was. Yeah. Never forget it. Bird 9 Alright. Oh, <laughs> Anything else, guys, from that section, if you tried the homework like I asked you to? Wait, so what, what, um, what, what features <laughs> should I talk about when they, that they have in common? Their curves change. Right, right, but like, but it says what features do the curves have in common? Well, that's what I, yeah, just do oh. they both have like a, a, a rounded top to them, or do okay. they both uh, crisscross at the same pattern, just stretched out? Anything, anything, yeah. Uh, and then how do they change when C increases? Yes, they're both Can absolute disasters. Example of, um, another example of a problem, like kind of like what we would have, maybe one of the ones that's in the textbook but not assigned to them. Uh, sure. Radical. Let's do 21. Whoa. Yeah, 21. That's interesting. That's what I was just looking at. There you go. Let's not do 21 because that's what I signed for homework. I was hoping you wouldn't notice. <laughs> I was hoping. Could you twenty two? This says describe the motion of a particle with position x y as t varies. Okay. So you can graph these. That's probably a really good idea. Just do a quick sketch of these. They give you a very truncated uh, interval for t. 
So like on number 19, I would definitely plug in break up one to two more than just one, two, you know. Maybe go one, uh, uh, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, at least do that, yes? Mm -hmm. So kind of break your intervals up and get more input so you get more resolution with what's happening. Um, to describe the motion, uh, well, to be honest, the quickest way to describe it would be graphing it and then putting little arrows on it. So I'm not sure why they didn't just ask you to do that. Um, I don't know if anybody, did you try out number 21? Let me ask you this real quick. What do you think? So if I made that 2 sine t, 2 cosine t, can somebody tell me what that would create? Um, circle. Circle, right? No, 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 no. Just a circle. It's not, they're not inside. They're outside. So it would just be a circle of radius 2. Yeah, there you go. If I just left it sine and cosine, that's a unit circle. So it's 2, 2. But it's 5, 2. What shape? moves in the x direction more or less than the y direction. Not a circle. Oh, an ellipse. An ellipse. Yes. Dude. I got an oval. You got an oval? Okay. That's another name for it. I love it. I got a squash circle. <laughs> I got a Stewie's head. That's 21. Oh, yeah. I got a, I got a Stewie's head. All right. So there's a, another example. It was just an ellipse that looked like that. Um, I don't think it's like, uh, anything. Y was two. Yeah, I gave you. So here's the ones that are very basic. Whoops. Eliminate the parameter to find a Cartesian equation, sketch the curve, and indicate with an arrow the direction that we did examples like that. Right? Now, I'm not saying that some of these don't get weird, but what's most important for problems is do you know how to start to attack it? If you don't even know how to start to attack it, then you're screwed. But I want you to know how to attack it and then give me specific questions about things that get weird, right? Um, sketch the curve, eliminate the parameter. Okay, those are your basic two questions. Graph it, eliminate the parameter. Yes? For number nine, that's a problem where like the t parameter can't be negative, right? Exactly. Okay. So that is another example of what to look for in terms of what x could possibly, x can't be negative. Okay. Should be zero and up from there. Yeah. Like it. I saw that. Like it. Okay. Like it. All right, so let's do this. I was going to do polar, but I think it makes sense just to talk about some basic calculus with parametric. Um, now that you all are totally comfortable with parametric, mm -hmm. no, I understand. Uh, especially if you've never done it before. So if you've never done it before, this was kind of a quick lecture, but it really isn't much more beyond what we just talked about. Now, some of the problems will get weird. They just will. Um, especially when you have something con uh, constructed by actually rolling a circle or something. I mean, the, the, those kind of problems get really nifty. Especially if you have a circle inside of a circle and then a point on the inner circle. And how does it, what shape does it describe as everything, as it rotates inside of the thing rotating. Oh. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that like the spiral thing you use where you like put Dude. the pencil in the circle? And yes, thank you, spirograph. I was gonna ask, I asked people earlier if they knew about it, but has anybody ever seen the spirograph game? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Where you have gears and then you have smaller gears and you put your pencil in and you go wee, you know, that's, that's in the days before we had the internet and stuff, you know. This is what we did. Uh, was a step up from stones and rocks and cardboard boxes. <laughs> mm. We could do our spirograph. Look, I'm making this, you know, okay, right? And what's really neat is you could actually use some mathematics to figure out, uh, given the gear size and how many uh, teeth it has and so forth, you can actually calculate the math equation. You know, you can make the poor game, um, well, I would say better, but <laughs> so, um, so yeah, spirograph is a good example of parametric equations. And real quick, I just want to show you this before we get to the calculus. Here's the equation for a butterfly. This is the parametric equation. Well, this is a polar equation, sorry. Where's my parametric equation? This is a polar equation. We haven't talked about that yet. It's like gamma radiation. Gamma radiation. Where is gamma radiation from? 
Yeah, yeah that's that. the... Isn't it just a wave function? Yeah. <laughs> Here is the parametric... This is the parametric equation for the butterfly equation. For the butterfly. Great at penetrating, but not very strong ionizers, but they're good ionizers because they're great at penetrating. Yeah. You guys with me? So if you just Google search butterfly curve parametric, you can get that, and then you can plug it in your calculator. Uh, let me get away before whatever that is opens up. Um, so let's go is back there anything to different this in the book? handout. That they talk about other, like is there anything in the book other than what Jeff talked about in class? Yeah. Yes. yes. Not really. really. That's so, it. Yes. They would, yep. The calculus involved with looking like at something problem? that's defined parametrically mm -hmm. is remarkably like straightforward. Um, so we the end result of a parametric equation lives in the xy plane, right? So when I want to talk about slopes of parametric curves, I still want to know what dy dx is, because a parametric curve, when you graph it, lives in the xy plane. Does this make sense so far? But I have x defined in terms of t, and I have y defined in terms of t. And sometimes it's really difficult to eliminate the parameter, and sometimes it's actually next to impossible. So what do I do? I do that. And if you think about it just algebraically, the DETs would cancel here, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice that this works out exactly the way that we would hope it would work out. So I can calculate this very easily. I can calculate this very easily normally. There's derivatives, much better than intervals. So can everybody please do number one for me? So what's really kind of nifty about parametric curves is a single input, t, creates entire points. And this is why I can get dy dx in terms of t, because t defines the point that I'm at. So what do I find first? Well, what's dy dt? One. One. Yeah, one. That's crazy. And what's crazy. dx dt? Two t plus three. <laughs> Therefore, dy. So dy dx is one over two one over two t plus three. Now, if I wanted to find the slope at a specific point, uh, I could have the point defined to me in terms of a value of t. So if I said t equal to one, what point am I talking about? You would plug t equal 1 into yeah. x and y to so get what t am I talking about? Y, or x. I'm sorry, what point am I talking about? x is equal to 4. 4. And y is equal to 2. 2. So I'm at the point 4, 2. But of course, my dy dx is in terms of t, so I plug in t equal 1. What would I get for the slope at, at that point? 1 fifth. Yeah, 1 fifth. Mm -hmm. And then I can make my y equals mx plus 2. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to. Um, all right, try number two. Find the points where the tangent intersects.
see a bit of a shortcut. Did I actually ask for dy dx? No. I really didn't, right? Considering dy dx is dy dt over dx dt, when is something, when is something in this form going to be horizontal? Mm -hmm. When the slope is zero. And what makes the slope zero if the, if the top is zero? Right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, not a bad idea to find dy dx. So these are not zero at the same place, right? So when is uh, when is a curve going to be horizontal when the slope is zero? The slope is zero when the top of the fraction is zero. So if I look at dy dt, when is this equal to zero? So horizontal will be t equal to one negative one. Well, what points does that relate to, of course? You guys start to see how to put this kind of problem together? When they ask you the answer is going to be a point, yeah. you very often figure out a value of t, and then you just go generate the point, right? So for t equal to 1, what point do we generate? Um, 3 and 2 over 3. Yeah, 3. And uh, that's 1, 1 third, 1 third minus 1, negative 2 thirds. Okay. And then for negative 1, 3 minus 4 thirds. 3 minus 4 thirds. Crazy. What about vertical? That's when the, when the slope is 1. It's straight the straight slope up. is 0 for the y, uh, for the x. Right? So to have a vertical slope, this, to have a vertical tangent line, the slope has to be 1. Undefined. Zero. undefined. Infinite, undefined. And when is it undefined? When the bottom is zero. Yeah. The bottom is dx dt. So when is dx dt zero? Zero. zero? zero. Crazy. So when t equals zero. And what point is that? Yeah. You get one, zero. I love it. So has everybody got that? Let me see if I can do this real quick. Where'd he go? 2t squared. Plus one. Holy shit, there we go. And then one third t cubed. Uh, minus t. Oh shit and a half. All right, Desmos. One third t. Desmos like, user error. Shut up. All right. Um, so let me see if I can do this. This is probably not going to work the way I want it to. Okay. I'm not able to. Not able to do that. So let's see. Somewhere in here is horizontal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what did we get for horizontal? Three negative two thirds and three negative four thirds. Now that's interesting. Did I put this in there correctly? Two t squared plus one and one third t cubed minus t. Yes. Yeah, it's a little weird. I don't expect that. Oh, maybe it's because of this. Let's see, negative 10. There we go. I didn't put any negative values in. Sweet. Now you can see. So it should be. Why did I come out? It should be positive 4 thirds. Equal to 1 is 3. Oh, negative 1. Oh, okay, okay. That's my fault. So the second point shouldn't be 3, negative 4 thirds because it's negative 1. It should be 1 third plus 1. So it should be positive 4 thirds. You guys see that? So we got, that's my fault, I think. 3, negative 2 thirds is correct when you put a 1 in. But when you put a negative 1 in, it's, it's going to be minus negative 1, so plus 1. So we 1 third plus 1 is 4 thirds. So then this makes sense. At 3, 
There's a positive output where it's horizontal, and there's a negative output where it's horizontal. So when it's negative one, the one third is negative. Oh, so then it's going to be two thirds, right? Yeah. Okay. So once you pass on. Yeah. Which makes sense because this looks to be symmetric around three. Mm -hmm. Noise. And by the way, do you guys notice what just happened? I, when I did this, I had zero here. Yeah, I had zero, <laughs> right? And I don't remember what I had here. So I, I was missing an entire part of this function. So that's why you have to be careful about what kind of inputs are you allowing this to use. And then notice here, oh, this is kind of a cool little fish to you. And then it's connected to something from before. Uh, where did we say there was a vertical tangent? Um, one, zero. one zero. One zero, that totally makes sense. Right here, it goes up and right at, Right at this point, it's straight up and down mm -hmm. as I'm traveling. Okay, I like it. It's not my head, I don't know which way this is going. Yes, thank you. It should be coming down. No, it should be coming around and over. Yes, okay. Are you guys feeling it's kind of nice to see work you did on something brand new actually correlate to things you know already? Mm -hmm. If I just gave you this image and I said, show me where the lines are. Change the lines are horizontal. You could have done that pretty easily. You know it's where it's flat. Yeah. yeah. What about at eight zero? Because you notice how they they swap at eight zero. That's where they intersect. What would that be? Eight seven zero. Or seven zero. Or oh, here. Seven zero. Yeah. What about that? It's, that's just when they're equal to each other. Yeah, they, they just, they're not. That's just when it runs into itself. Yeah. yeah. The line isn't changing at all, it's just they're crossing. Yeah, mm. okay. It's just two separate lines. All right, guys. I think that is most likely enough. Next time we'll get the polar stuff. Oh, it's pretty light. Um, Wednesday we'll also discuss if the quiz happens on Monday. There will be a quiz on Monday, and we'll discuss then what it's going to cover. And if somebody reminds me about the practice final, I'll post that between now and then. Um, and I'll bring some hard copies. Um, real quick. Thank you. Before I forget it. Right? I made this square. What is that? That angle right there is going to have to be.